It is quite uh, interesting to see that uh, at this very early stage, all the advanced features of JET, which are the trademark of JET, they were already in the concept. In an energy-hungry world, the JET may be a step along the road towards a virtually unlimited source of electric power. The fusion process that, that we're developing is uh, a reaction uh, between uh, deut deuterons and, and tritons in, in a hot plasma. So any path in the development of, of fusion has to actually create the process for real. And the only way you can do that is to have both fuels present uh, in, in, in the system. Being the first tritium experiment in Europe, um, it was very exciting um, for us. So it was, it was really things that nobody had ever done um, uh, before. So the team was really very, very committed and excited to, to get on and do it. Man-made fusion is, uh, is, is a, naturally a combination of scientific and engineering inputs. So I think JET's very special in the way that um, the physicists and engineers have worked together to produce such a successful machine. On top of that, they've, um, they've understood the roles of quality assurance and quality control, and that those are different and they have to be worked together to make sure that the integrity of the engineering was of a standard that's needed. So already mid-campaign, uh, we started setting fusion energy records. So there was a period where the machine systems were going very well and it was really exciting to get a first shot with the best fusion record and then shot after shot we were improving on the precedent record. So we have worked for, for 30 years with industry partners to deliver on the operations of JET and now you can see JET is also this big, well both a literal and a metaphorical big magnet, right? It draws people and partners to Cullum. And that's been a big part of the ecosystem that you see at Cullum, and people come here because of JET. The first truly European device, so, so looking at individual countries, so it started in the early uh, 1980s when all the um, individual European countries had a fusion program. So this is, let's say, already from the start, a in the international uh, and the effort. But for me personally, uh, what has been the most important part and uh, what I keep in my mind and I cherish, in fact, is the team spirit, the team spirit, which was quite unique. Partly in view of JET's longevity, uh, multiple generations of, of, of uh, scientists and engineers have, have uh, gained their experience on, on JET and um, uh, uh, many of whom have gone on to, to, uh, uh, to join um, ITER uh, and, and, and other fusion teams throughout the world. I think JET's existence has, has contributed a lot. The, the fact that it's a cooperative effort um, with such a major goal and uh, you know, shared investment, I think is quite important for making people feel that fusion is still serious. So I've been fortunate to spend 20 years working with an international team of people who are all focused on the same thing. Well, that's what's happening there in the background. And um, I think it's just great to be able to work together with a team like that. JET for me is uh, more than the machine. It's also the, the scientific team uh, and every everything that came with it, all the scientific programs, all the upgrades that were made to it. Uh, and it's very clear that uh, this has made an impact. We make use of the advantages of all these cultures. So you could also end up in hurdles that everyone has a different culture and in the end nothing works. But uh, JAT shows that yes, we can work together and we make use of this. You know, I, I often say, when we work in big science and you achieve absolutely nothing on your own, 
and Jet is actually the testament to that. That you know, every time we run an experiment, there's hundreds of people involved in that, all pulling together, all working together, and that is actually what I'll miss the most.